Hello, my name is Ross Marshall. Uh, what I'd like to uh, talk about here in this video, in a series of them, <coughs> is the um, issue we have today between um, truth and falsehood, the true gospel and the other gospel that seems to look and sound true, but is it's the truth, but it's been leavened to the point that I, I would say that, uh, I would agree that no matter where you go, God can work through anything and save anybody. But he did warn us against knowledge, good knowledge, bad knowledge, it all will puff you up, and without it you'll be destroyed. Uh, um, so it's a good happy balance. Uh, if you get too much teachings that are perverted, based upon falsities that are derived from uh, false principles, false interpretation, false translations of scripture, you'll get what you see out in the churches today. The other gospel cannot help but divide and conquer. Christ warned us, the divided house won't stand. He's, he's saying that in reference to the real true gospel, the pure one, simple, pure gospel will not divide. It strictly will teach and preach and push and draw everyone into unity. <clears throat> it will teach you tolerance, patience, love, kindness, and all that. Not an appearance of it. That's why I can pretty much go anywhere I want, any church I want, and fit in just fine until they kick me out. It's them that's the heresy. They're the ones that believe in separatism and division. And that's what heresy means. It's uh, sect, sectarian, or sectioning off. Uh, we disagree, so we're going to start our own church. Uh, well, I'm not here to start my own church. I can form a fellowship. But anybody's welcome. I don't care Catholic, Protestant, Buddhist, Hindu. As long as you're a human being, I'll even let dogs and cats in. They're there listening. Who's to say? You know, preach the gospel to all creatures. But let's get back to truth versus falsity. It's primarily based on bad translations. And I believe some of the verses it's been purposely mistranslated. And I want to speak about this. And that's why I want to is is why to push you to go to the Greek. Put the English aside and start doing your own English conversion. And check to see if the good old King James only is totally correct. A good 80% of it is some of the most accurate translation on the face of the planet. But then there are these weird little verses that just so happen to destroy a certain teaching. It's obviously, it's been perpetrated. For instance, the card that you can pull that'll collapse the whole house of cards on orthodoxy and limited atonement and eternal uh, damnation uh, is the, uh, the word eon. The words eon, in plural, eons, and the word eonion, or, or age enduring, or that whatever it is that endures throughout the eon ages until they all come to an end, and the final state starts. The Bible is talking about the plan of the ages, of the eons. And in one verse in King James, it does translate eon properly as age. Why it doesn't do that in all the contexts is this reason. It would destroy the word eternity, or forever, or the word ever. For instance, <coughs> Revelation warns against adding and subtracting and changing the, the, the word of God, the, the, this book, Revelation. Well, any book. It's talking about the truth. <coughs> And blah, 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 forever and ever. Amen. The Greek has for the aeon, or eons, of the eons. So it says for the eon of the eons. It's talking about one age period amongst a bunch. Series. Two plurals for the eons of the eons. Well, it would be for all the eons that there are, which is the, of all these eons. So it's saying I'm talking about all of the eons of the eons that exist. 
and then ends. Bam. So eons have a beginning and end. Because Christ made it that way. In light of himself. He says, I'm the Omega, Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning, I'm the end. <coughs> and the Omega is just the, the end of all the eons and the beginning of the final state. You can't split eternity from that point because everything this side of the final state has a designated time period for the eons of the eons. And that includes hell, the lake of fire, uh, uh, pain, suffering, whatever, uh, a, a person's uh, resistance, everything. Christ becomes heir to all. This is what I want to get into. Well, it revolves around this phrase, for the forever and ever, you'll go to hell and burn forever and ever. No. Well, let's say you do go to hell and burn. Well, it's for the eons of the eons. It had a beginning, like the lake of fire. It's just the grave. Uh, like a fire was created created for the devil and its angels. Now later he adds mankind to it. But how long does it last? Well, if it had a beginning, it has an ending to it. For us, we had a beginning, but God blesses us with a gift. We're not going to have no ending. In the final state forward, we can say forever. But for right now, our future realization of living forever is seriously, strictly, we will see it last from age to age because we're observing the ages unfold. So this is what this verse means. Uh, the, uh, English translation, especially King James, uh, oh, in, even in Latin, it, it perverts it. But removing the, changing eon or eon, singular or plural, to a, some kind of verb or ever, ever, and then for uh, uh, for ever and well in the Greek it's not K I A and it's uh, of the it's T O N same as the eon of the eons well they remove of the and add and in there change each one to a verb and then remove the the over here altogether and that's how they get for ever and ever rather than for the eons of the eons. <clears throat> if you properly translate it to, for the eons of the eons, it's a time-designated period of time. Uh, uh, undesignated. It can be 70-year lifespan or 1,000-year uh, millennial reign or, or whatever. But it has a beginning and an end. It's a, it's, it's gonna, uh, it starts and ends. It's age-lasting for that age. And it starts here again for this age. <clears throat> He's talking about a series of eons. See, like four or five of them. We've gone through about three, four so far. We call them dispensation. Okay, so that shows you that our English has perverted the translations. Whereas in other verses, it's very clear. Uh, well, they do it with uh, cosmos, uh, world, and, and, and stuff. Uh, the, that uh, One of the worst translations is uh, you get into the contradiction that uh, uh, the world has no end uh, but then the world uh, 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 the world uh, uh, e either ends in one verse and in another it doesn't uh, it's because they're confusing uh, the word eon or age with the Greek word cosmos it's not uh, since the world began it's since the, uh, the age began the <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of other uh, mistranslations too. But this leads us to does uh, people go to hell and, and people go to hell? yeah. But speaking of hell and judgment and punishment, uh, does going to hell last forever? No, Revelation 20. 13 and 14 says hell is when death are brought forth and he, he empties the captiv captives there and leaves it empty and casts hell and death into the lake of fire. It's empty. So hell is limited place. Well, it's the same, same time frame for the eons of the eons. But hell lasts for all these eons and then it comes to an end uh, at the judgment of men's works and starts the lake of fire period. Well, the lake of fire started before creation. And it's still running. It runs an extra eon age. But it only lasts for 
so many eon ages. That particular eon is the last one. It comes to an end too. So you see, the consequences is uh, obviously uh, what's thrown in there isn't annihilated. Uh, you may punish it and hurt it, like with the second death. Uh, you'd be hurt by the second death or not hurt by it. But you're not tortured forever because it comes to an end. The purpose of the lake of fire is to purify. Pure being the Greek word for fire. Yeah. Okay. So, discussing translation problems and where it can get you if you purposely contrive to pervert it to, to teach something that it doesn't teach. And that's the problem we have today. Limited atonement. And you get a, a paradox between man's free will and limited atonement and, and Calvinist uh, divine election and, and limited atonement. They're both heretical because they both divide. They both, neither one of them, totally reconcile. And that leads us uh, to the question of, uh, well, what does all this mean? Well, the question would be, what is God's will? Not his wish, not his hope, not his desire. At least uh, I really hope that it happens, but then again, it might not type question. No, there's no question about it. God, God, in some texts it may say he will, he, he desires and hopes and frets and regrets and all that, but when you get to his will, what is he willeth? Quote good old James. He wills certain things, and therefore thus he predetermines it. And without offending our liberty, our flexibility, limited will, uh, self-will, we do have choices, but we can't make things happen. We can ask, but we can't snap our fingers and get ourselves saved. He does that. That's a different problem we'll deal with later. Right now we want to just find out what God's will is. And uh, our next video will uh, start with God's will. Then we'll move on to uh, things like, um, uh, let me get the list for you here. Uh, well, we've got uh, the, the message of God, the person of God, the power of God, the oath, the hope, the purpose, uh, the nature of God, the pleasure, the morality, the wisdom, the will of God, which we'll discuss, the testimonies of God, and that deals with all the testimonies of the prophets and apostles, and the, the judgment of God, the word, the work of God, the salvation, the drawing of God, the results, the gifts, and the sheep of God. That's going to be a good one. Um, most people think there's all kind of different sheep, and some are not sheep, but goats and stuff. In the end, everyone's a sheep. The book makes it very clear. But for a certain age, eon, they may be goats. But in the very end, there's only one big sheep fold called mankind. So, see you in the next video. In defense of universal reconciliation of all mankind and all of creation. So, have a good day.